This is just a video to give you a little introduction why you might want to use Twitter or Digo or TweetDeck, the tools that we're encouraging to use in this PD. A lot of people think of Twitter as a mindless and useless tool, and we've all heard about things like, oh, my cat had kittens, or I'm going to the mall. You know, and yes, there are people that that's what they post, but if you sign up for Twitter and choose to use Twitter for more professional or educational purposes, there are a lot of tools out there, and there are a lot of people out there on Twitter who use Twitter solely for this purpose, for promoting education and interest in a professional manner. So once you have a Twitter account, as you can see on the screen here, you could choose to follow people. Now, of course, you say, why would I want to follow them? Well, like I said, they put out a lot of interesting uh, information and resources. And I use a specific tool to follow what's going on in Twitter. I actually use TweetDeck. That's something we'll talk about in this professional development. And what TweetDeck uh, allows you to do is to set up columns and follow hashtags. And what hashtags are, are... <clears throat> descriptive elements that are put in a tweet to help organize and make tweets searchables. Here is a list of popular educational hashtags. The hashtag is the pound sign, the number sign, followed by a term. So for example, hashtag education is the hashtag people use just to talk about general education ideas. But there's all kinds of other ones that become more specific like arts ed, art ed, or English chat for English education or art education. There's math chat for math education. There's LM chat for elementary grade educators, etc. Once you get familiar with some of these hashtags, it's easy to use a tool like Twitter to follow them. So as you can see, I have, this is TweetDeck, and there's columns on the page and they all have to do with a certain topic or hashtag here at the top of the screen. This first column is hashtag edtech. So this is anything that has to do with educational technology and it's people who tweet on that information. I have a list which TweetDeck also allows you to do that only makes a column of certain people. So these are top educational technology people what I've referred to as my Twitter stars and it's only their posts that appear in that column so I'm not gonna see any of the other stuff that's out there about people's kittens in the mall and all that stuff because I've been careful to jury what is here and that's all that comes up I also use TweetDeck for a group of people and we have shared a common hashtag. We together decided that lead CT for this group would be the hashtag. So if anybody wants to share something specifically with the lead CT group, they would tweet and add hashtag lead CT in it, and anybody who's following that hashtag will be able to engage in the converse, conversation. So imagine with your colleagues or your group of colleagues, you want to share, they're all on Twitter, you come up with a common hashtag for yourselves, and when you tweet out, boom, it just goes in there and they know immediately what it has to do with and the conversation you're having. I have an interest in photography, so I follow the hashtag Canon7D. This is the kind of camera I have. It allows me to see what people are talking about in regards to cameras, photography, and specifically the Canon7D. In June, I was unable to go to the ISTE conference, which is a technology educators conference. And for 2012, it was held in June. I was unable to go, but following the ISTE hashtag here, I could see anybody having conversations about the kinds of things that were discussed discussed at ISTE. What also was great is at the time I was able to see live what people were talking about at that exact moment. Uh, another example that I threw in here is the elementary chat and you can see whatever it is that people are talking about. Now this seems like a lot of stuff on the screen. You might think, wow, that's a lot of stuff. I don't have time for this. Well, you know what? You're right. You can put as much time in or not that you uh, want to spend looking at what any of this information is. But if something catches your eye, you can quickly find it, you can quickly look at it. And then there's only 140 characters in a tweet, so people have to keep it short, and then usually they provide a link to the uh, content that they're referring to. So for example, if I wanted to look at this 50 creative ways to use Skype, I could just follow the link and go to that web page. 
Now, I might not have a lot of time, but I scan it quickly and it sounds interesting. So this is where Digo comes into uh, play. Digo is a cloud-based, web-based bookmarking tool. Now, a lot of you might think, well, hey, I bookmark things all the time. I put them in my favorites on Internet Explorer. That's great, but if you're using your school computer and you bookmark something there, you go home, you don't have it, it's on your school computer. When you bookmark something in Digo, it's there and you can access it from any internet-based computer. Now in addition to that, not only can I bookmark these things, I can also highlight them. And I could highlight things that are interesting. It'll save it onto the bookmark. And then in addition to that, I could then add a sticky note. that gets added to my bookmark as well. So I could see my own notes and I could highlight information. Now the next great thing about Digo is anybody else who is also a Digo user, I can share these bookmarks with them. And just like we had groups that we could make on Twitter, you could make Digo groups. So you can collaborate with your grade level partners and you can create a Digo group where you share useful creative ideas and resources that you could use in your classroom. Now, they can go back, they can highlight articles and put notes in them, and when you view those articles, you'll see their notes. And the same thing goes for you. You can highlight and note, uh, make notes on them, and you can share them with one another. These are just a few useful ways to use Twitter, Digo, and TweetDeck to really start to establish a personal learning network. Hope this gives you enough to whet your appetite to keep you wanting to learn more.